Well, I hope you're interested to come up for a uh, little sugar bush tour with me today. And we're going to do an unboxing. The Olight Baton. Just going to give you guys a heads up um, about a flash sale that's happening. As has been my habit. So, uh, let's do this up there. My daily commute. Uh, almost. Almost daily as long as the weather's good and the trail's firm. Don't even have to wear my snowshoes right now. Everything's frozen up. But I did bring them because uh, when you get off trail, that's a little bit trickier. Dominion and Graham boiler, evaporator, arch. My tarp shelter held up for another year. So it's almost, almost time to get this thing rocking. A couple days it's gonna be full, full tilt. Full boil. I have to, uh, have to get my hoses out and uh, bleach these lines so my gravity feed works again. And what's going on here? Oh, it's just frozen in. It's not full. I gotta open this up and bleach that thing out too. Cut a little bit of firewood up. Yesterday, I had some friends out for a little bonfire. Just trying to burn up some old junk here, make some space. And once the snow melts, I need to repile that firewood and get it under a dry cover. A little look in the bucket. Dry. This one we just put up recently. Um, these are the five sixteenths. These are the smaller spiles. Um, trying to use more of those this year and fewer of the big ones. They say the smaller ones are healthier for the tree because they leave a smaller hole, right? It's almost less than half the size. Um, but based on the studies I've seen, you basically get the same yield of sap out of a small tap versus a big tap. Should be good in a few days. I'm kind of at the northern end of uh, maple syrup range, uh, sugar maple growing range. So my trees tend not to be very big. Um, so, you know, when we're touring around the sugar bush, you'll see most of my trees are only big enough for a single tap. Uh, rarely we'll get into some bigger maples that can handle two taps. So those would be ones that are more than 20 centimeters in, or sorry, 20 inches in diameter, which is 50 centimeters in diameter. Well, let's have a little look at this flashlight, the baton. So, there it is. Olight Baton 3, designed to stand out. At a glance, it kind of reminds me of the Mini Perrin that I was using recently. The Mini Perrin uh, stands straight up and down and then the light faces forward. Uh, where this one, the light is on the front. And it's got beautiful packaging, as I've come to expect from Olight. And all the cables and everything you need. I already pulled the tab out of this one and charged it up. Uh, so it's all ready to go. And it uses the magnetic charger that most of their current model flashlights seem to be using, which I find very, very convenient. Um, I've messed around with a few USB plugs and they, they tend to uh, jam over time or you bend them or something happens. But these ones have been uh, pretty reliable. What we got here? I didn't even read the package yet. I'm just going by intuition. So, uh, off, off and on. If we hold it, ooh, it gets a little brighter. If we hold it again, brighter yet. And back to low mode. So we've got three brightness settings. Um, oh yeah, so if we double click, it goes to 
double clicking goes to like hyper bright so that's also pretty standard with a bunch of their flashlights and i'm thinking if i hold it down for a long hold to power it on it might go into yeah my favorite mode the little firefly mode or the uh moonlight mode which is really handy when you don't want to burn your eyeballs out but you just want to find something in your tent um so that's cool it's got the two-way the two-way clip so you can clip it up clip it down uh this is definitely light enough you could slip it onto a ball cap probably i bet you i could even slip it onto the edge of my toque totally it's so light it could just sit there and if i could find the button i could cruise around with toque light um this one even could probably have a lanyard through that little hole on the clip this could even be a keychain light um, although that might be weird with the magnet but it's definitely a super light no reason not to have it on you kind of a flashlight um, so this video is airing march the 18th at 6 p.m eastern standard time i believe which is the start of a flash sale for the baton 3 I'm going to put a couple of pictures up on the screen right now of that flash sale with some additional details, uh, probably including pricing, probably including free tiers. If you spend a certain amount of money, you get a product for free, uh, probably also including some bundle pricing for multiple products. And down below, for Canadian and American customers, I have two links, um, so I'm shamelessly promoting uh, affiliate links. I do get um, affiliate commission from selling these lights, which is very easy to do because they're awesome. Um, but if you are a Canadian or American customer and you buy a non-sale item, you can use my discount code OWC, like one wild crafter, OWC10 for 10% off your order. Yeah. Um, another amazing light by, by Olight. So, uh, I would carry that light or one similar to it with me pretty much everywhere I go, especially up here where I might be stuck out later than I want. Um, I know we all have flashlights on our cell phones, but our cell phones are useful for things maybe uh, other than lighting our path at night. So you might be able to keep your battery charged up for emergency calls or taking pictures and whatever else. So it's super nice to have a little light with you. And I think I'm going to go cut a tree down. So. If you like uh, chainsaws and trees falling, um, hang around for a little bit. It's uh, kind of that time of year where the sap's not really flowing on the cold days. And so there's a million other things that need to be done in the sugar bush, including uh, trimming out non-target species that are overcrowding your sugar maples and removing your lower quality growing stock uh, so that each time you kind of cut through carefully without overcutting and without damaging the surrounding trees in the soil you're leaving a higher quality more productive faster growing sugar bush that's my plan um, i'm following a uh, a guide which is published by uh, the ontario sugar producers association or the ontario woodlot management association or somebody like that um, but there are also other excellent guides um, produced by various um, ontario ministries and uh, organizations and state departments so if you have a piece of property and you want to know how best to manage it um, there are no there is no shortage of advice and guides out there for you so um, have a look at what's available and uh, that's what i'm doing and looking forward to seeing this forest which is um, the property where i grew up and have spent uh, several decades of my life uh, hunting fishing roaming camping playing around in the woods and uh, I'm looking forward to several more decades of the same and just watching how, how, the, how the forest evolves and hopefully thrives under my, uh, under my management um, as it uh, generally has under my, my dad's management. So anyway, chainsaw time. How about a little less talk and a little more? <laughs>
branches too. So in a nutshell, that's, that's uh, kind of what most of my time off consists of between now and the end of April. Collecting sap, boiling sap, cutting firewood, clearing the bush, lots of exercise, lots of hiking around, and, um, and I, I really have no complaints about that. The more time outside the better. So whatever you do, get outside.